So what is the essential pattern at work in all of these things? Well, it's this, and it's this, and it's all of these. So let's just take the order of sharps right now. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. Order of sharps here. We know that sharps go this way and flats go this way. What is the key signature for major that has no sharps or no flats? Well, that's the key of C. And as we said, that if we go this way, then we get sharps. And if we go this way, then we get flats. What that means is now I have all of the key signatures because I know that zero sharps and flats is C. And I know that if I go this way, one sharp is the key of G. And two sharps is the key of D. If I keep going, three sharps is the key of A. And four sharps is the key of E. And five sharps is the key of B. And now what happened? I ran out of sharps. I ran out of keys. I'm all the way at B, but I still need more. So then I have to loop around and restart at F. But F's already been sharped at this point, so now it becomes F sharp, and then I end right where I started at C sharp. So again, this is the order that sharps occur in the key signature. If there's one sharp, it's F. If there's two sharps, it's F and C. And if it's three sharps, it's F, C, G, and so on. That's the order of sharps starting on this end. But the order of sharps is not the name of the key. The sharp is not on do, the sharp is on T. So the order of sharps is this way, but the key starts here with zero, and then one sharp, and then two sharp, and then three sharp. So for example, the key of A major has three sharps, and those three sharps are F, C, and G. The key of B major has five sharps, and those five sharps are F, C, G, D, A. We can also double check ourselves because if B is the tonic, then the last sharp will be T right below it. So if B is the tonic, then the sharp is A right below it. Now that's all well and good for major keys, but minor keys are a lot harder to memorize because I don't know reasons. What do I do for minor keys? Well, if C is the key that has no sharps and flats for major, what's the key with no sharps and flats for minor? That's the key of A. And if we keep going this way in sharps, and this way in flats, just like what we did for the major keys, we'd know that A is the minor key with zero sharps, and that E is the minor key with one sharp, and that B is the minor key with two sharps. And again, once we run out here, we have to restart on this side, and once we restart, we have to say the word sharp. So the first one is A, and then E, and then B, and then after that, we get F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, and so on. So that's sharps. The same idea works with flats, except that we're going the opposite direction. So we start at zero for C, and then we go to the first flat, which is the key of F. One flat for the key of F. And to reiterate, one flat is the key of F, but one flat is not F flat. The order of my flats is B, E, A, D, G, C, F which means that the first flat I come to is B, and then E, and then A, and then D. So if I have one flat, it's B flat. But if I have four flats, it's B, E, A, D. And if I have six flats, it's B, E, A, D, G, C. 
That's the order that the flats happen in the key signature. But the order of flats that happens in the key signature is this way. When I start actually naming the keys that those, are, those flats are part of, I start here with A and 0. The key of D has one flat. The key of G has two flats. The key of C has three flats. The key of F has four flats. And once I run out there, I have to restart on the other side. So now B flat, E flat, and A flat. So essentially, all of our work with key signatures and scales can be summarized right there. Now I say summarized, not replaced. If you don't understand how these work and why these work, this will largely become meaningless to you. And if this is confusing, go back and review your scales. Go back and review the circle of fifths. Go back and review how we came up with all of these answers here. And then, once you understand all of that, this becomes an incredible tool, a great shortcut for remembering how key signatures are built, the order the flats occur, the order the sharps occur, the order that sharp keys and flat keys occur, and how to find major and minor keys that have the same number of sharps and flats. For example, the major key with three sharps, one, two, three, A. The minor key with three sharps, one, two, three, F sharp. Now we can realize that A and F sharp share the same key signature, what we call relative keys. So this is a great shorthand. But ultimately, your goal is to memorize all of these keys, to be able to just recite them as if you're reciting your home address, not as if you're reciting the number of doors in your house. Uh, 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 12? Uh, I don't know, do you count closet doors? Or what about the garage doors? That counts too, right? That's the way a lot of people are view key signatures. They can figure them out, but they don't know them. So in this case, figuring them out is where we've gotten to. And this is a great way to figure them out quickly, but ultimately you're going to need to know them. That comes with practice, that comes with concerted effort, and that comes with time spent in memorization.